Welcome to another episode of Hardware Lens. Today we'll be reviewing the Gigabyte Z490 Aorus Ultra. At the $300 price point, the Gigabyte Z490 Aorus Ultra faces some stiff competition with the likes of the MSI Z490 Unify and the Asus ROG Strix Z490 Gaming E. All three boards are solid options and excel in different areas. Today we'll be taking a detailed look at the Gigabyte option. Anywhere from 279 to 300 US, the Z490 Aorus Ultra is less expensive than the Aorus Master and the slightly, slightly more expensive than the Z490 Aorus Pro AX. For the price, you get a true 12 phase VRM with 60 amp DR MOS power stages, 5000 plus mega transfers per second memory support, 3 M.2 slots, Realtek ALC 1220 audio, 9 rear USB ports, support for 7 front USB ports, Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN, Wi Fi 6, and Bluetooth 5. You get 8 fan headers and a postcode display as well. The Z490 Aorus Ultra features typical Aorus graphics while highlighting support for Intel's latest 10th gen processors. Inside the box, the first thing you are greeted with is an owner's manual, DVD drivers, an installation guide, and a plethora of stickers. The Z490 Aorus Ultra includes a Wi-Fi 6 antenna, 8 SATA cables, a front panel adapter, 2 RGB extension cables, a noise detector, and 2 temperature probes that can be detected to the board's temp probe headers. The rear I.O. of this board is generous, with a total of 9 USB ports featuring a mix of USB 3.2 Gen 1 and 2 and USB 2.0, a USB 3.2 Type-C header, Wi-Fi headers, an HDMI port for integrated graphics, RJ45 LAN port, and audio headers are included. The 490 Aorus Ultra features robust power delivery in the form of a true 12-phase digital VRM with no doublers. The PWM signal is generated by a 12-phase Intersil ISL69269 controller. The Z490 Aorus Ultra features 12 Vichy Semiconductor SIC620A DR MOS power stages for the CPU and one for the iGPU power, each rated for up to 60 amps of current although Gigabyte advertises 55 amps each. The output filtering on this VRM is very solid, with 15 560 microfarad aluminum polymer capacitors from Panasonic around the front of the board, as well as five Panasonic SMT tantalum polymer capacitors mounted on the back of the CPU socket. SMT tantalum capacitors offer high capacitance as well as very low ESR and ESL. This excellent output filtering combined with 12 true phases should give this board excellent transient response characteristics. Among the myriad of gimmicky and ineffective VRM heatsinks that were clearly designed by the marketing department as opposed to engineers, I find the VRM cooling on this board to be a breath of fresh air. We see two densely thin graphene coated heatsinks connected by a heat pipe, giving this heatsink tons of surface area. The heatsink is secure to the board with screws and makes good contact with the MOSFETs. 7.5 watt per meter kelvin thermal pads provide good heat transfer. The VRM heat sinks also remain relatively unobstructed, making it easy to provide airflow over the VRM when pushing a 10900K to the max. The VRM heat sinks also remain relatively unobstructed, making it easy to provide airflow over the VRM when pushing a 10900K to the max. The Z490 Aorus Ultra provides good memory overclocking thanks to its shielded daisy chain layout. You can see from the lack of visible memory traces leading to the CPU. Gigabyte is using reinforced connectors for their CPU power 12 volt ATX connector and PCI Express slots. The high current version of the CPU 8 pin power connector is used and should support more current than you'll ever be able to cool unless you plan on using liquid nitrogen. Despite that fact, for peace of mind, Gigabyte has included an additional 4-pin CPU power connector. Its use is optional. The Intel AX201 Wi-Fi adapter provides support for Wi-Fi A, B, G, N, AC, and Bluetooth 5.0 with support for 2.4 to 5 GHz dual band. Gigabyte is using the Realtek ALC1220-VB audio codec with an array of high-quality Japanese audio capacitors, as well as shielding for superior audio quality. The Intel i225-V Ethernet controller provides support for 2.5 gigabit LAN. The look of this motherboard is very attractive and the feel is sturdy, with a brushed finish and neutral color tones that should look great in a variety of different builds. 
Controllable RGB lighting is provided for the Eorus logo on the PCH heatsink as well as the IO shield. This board features three M.2 slots connect directly to the Z490 chipset while the bottom slot shares bandwidth with the bottom PCI Express X4 slot. Hardware monitoring is provided by the ITE IT8688E as well as the IT8792E Super IO chips. The Z490 EORUS Ultra is using a six layer PCB with high quality components and construction throughout. CPU overclocking was easy with the EORUS Ultra as the BIOS provided all the typical voltage controls we like to see as well as some of the advanced voltages such as VCC PLL and VCC VTT which sometimes need to be tweaked to prevent cold, cold bugs under liquid nitrogen. Otherwise you shouldn't need to mess with those voltages. The EORUS Ultra provides six different load line selling settings for controlling VDROOP. We typically like to use as little load line as possible to minimize transient voltage spikes. The turbo load line setting provided an acceptable amount of VDROOP without forcing us to raise the idle voltage above 1.45V. The Z490 EORUS Ultra provides enough control over DRAM primary and secondary timings to keep you busy for weeks. SmartFan 5 allows you to set up temperature profiles and allowed us to set up profiles for the 10 fans installed in our test system in order to keep the sound to a minimum when our 10900K was not under load. For our overclocking setup we use the EVGA CLC360 AIO cooler front mounted with 6 fans in a push-pull configuration. We set the pump speed at max at all times and set the fans to run at a maximum RPM once the liquid temperature exceeded 42 Celsius. The case used was the Cooler Master H500P mesh for maximum airflow into the AIO. At the top of the case we mounted three additional intake fans to provide airflow over the RAM as well as the VRM. It should be noted that the top mounted fan closest to the VRM was cooling a 120mm AIO for the GPU, which would contribute to higher VRM temperatures. We don't see an issue with this as the VRM can take quite a bit of heat safely and we prioritize GPU cooling over VRM cooling for performance. We managed a 5.2 GHz all-core overclock on our 10900K CPU using 1.365 volts from the VR out reading and hardware info. This reading comes directly from the ISL69269 PWM controller and should provide the most accurate reading of the voltage that the CPU is actually seeing. This was a big difference from the 1.44V that was shown in CPU-Z. Our 10900K managed to pull 230 amps through the VRM before thermal throttling using Prime95 with AVX enabled. MOSFET temps hit 80 Celsius before throttling started on the CPU. We then stress tested our 10900K at these voltages overnight with AVX disabled to prevent throttling. Our MOSFET temps maxed out around 87C while pulling around 200 amps of current. While 87C is a bit higher than some of the boards featuring the 90 amp power stages and more phases, it is perfectly fine and well below the danger zone. Adding more phases would mean using doublers, and we think anything more than the 60 amp power stages used in this board are a bit overkill for normal usage. If you are planning on running liquid nitrogen and pulling 400 amps through the CPU, it might be a good choice to opt for a board with a larger VRM or invest in some solid active VRM cooling for this board. But 200 amps seems to be about the limit for a 10900K. Past that point, it is simply uncoolable without maybe using a custom loop, a chiller, liquid nitrogen, or a direct die setup. Since there's no direct die kit yet available for 10th gen, we were not able to test that, even though we would have liked to. Memory overclocking for this board provided some impressive results. Since B die can be somewhat temperature sensitive at high frequencies, we placed the provided temperature probe between the four sticks of RAM. We managed a maximum overnight memtest stable frequency of 4000 megatransfers per second with our four sticks, an impressive number for a daisy chain board with all four DIMM slots populated. It was unclear if we were hitting the limits of the board itself or the CPU memory controller, as we needed 1.35 volts of system agent voltage to hit these speeds with stability. Increasing DRAM voltage up to 1.5 did not help, and temps were at 45C for the RAM under the test. We didn't want to push the system agent voltage any higher, so we stopped there. We did manage to run mem tests for an hour at 4200 megatransfers per second, but it was not overnight stable. We tried the same overclock with two 16GB DIMMs of BDI RAM and experienced just about the same results. 
Anything higher than 4200 megatransfers per second was not able to boot into Windows. All in all, we think the Gigabyte Z490 Aorus Ultra is a great choice for, for a value-based high-end 10th gen build. You get all of the features of a premium board, a great VRM, Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN, high quality audio, a multitude of USB ports, a postcode display, great memory overclocking support, feature packed BIOS, and quality construction throughout while remaining at the $300 price point or less. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and hit the notification bell for more similar content.